from 51, 52, let's just round it to 50 to 100, okay? So about the devaluation that does for Bitcoin prices, yeah, good stuff. Bitcoin 2024, where do you think we end up? I think 150 is in the bag, and I'm just going to stick with that. 100% credit for the entire pump since 16.5 to 43,000. We nailed it. And when people were throwing stones, like, no way, you don't, you don't understand. Like, well, there are cycles for a reason. And we just kept talking about the cycle and kept talking about how we were going to be in this crypto summer and that we were going to, you know, drift toward fair value. And we had Tim on and we talked about fair value and people finally got a sense of the Metcalf's Law model. And you know, here we are at, yeah. at 43, 44, right below the fair value of 51. We're still not to the halving, so we still got time to get there in that in that slow drift. But the fireworks are about to start. Yeah, with that, let's let's get right into 2024. Mark, you want to lead us off with the uh, the first prediction? This 2024 is going to surprise to the downside again. Not, not collapse, not depression, but I I, I just think that. As everyone was on one side of the boat last year, negative, I think yeah, everybody's come back on the other side of the boat, positive. And yet, just about every indicator that you can look at from a macro perspective, leading economic indicators just made new cycle lows. I mean, like the lowest in the last four cycles. I don't think we've ever had this many consecutive negative readings of LEI ever. Like... <laughs> Crazy. PMIs have turned. Raul's been talking about this. I know you were just talking with Jim Bianco. Uh, Jim may have been talking about PMIs. There's there's a lot of macro data that that's a little negative. I think first quarter GDP is going to surprise a lot of people how low it is. But that's a cyclical thing. And even though they seasonally adjust, they don't seem to do it right. So it's always the lowest quarter. Uh, and I think they could be closing in on zero. I don't know that it'll go negative. We have a weather shock. <laughs> I haven't heard any forecast of polar vortex or anything like that. You know, in fact, to that point, it's funny. I haven't heard anybody talking about global warming anymore because we've had you know cold weather. I don't know. I, but weather, I think, is is the the swing factor that I can't predict. One maybe interesting tell was this last FOMC presser from Chair Powell where essentially from my vantage point, he sort of waved the white flag and said, yep, we think we need to cut rates and we're going into an election year. And that to me was like the most bullish. Oh know, no, it was the green flag, point. baby. It was not green a white flag. flag. Yeah, sorry, it was a green, green flag. flag. It was the start. I mean, it was yeah. start, gentlemen the start your engines gun. and go for it, baby. It was as political an announcement as I remember from the Fed. So... Look, I, it's it's very difficult to to ultimately predict these things. I think I've got I don't want to for uh, front run some of my other predictions, but I think the thing that is different this time, right? If you if you want to believe that uh, right now the stock market is very richly valued, um, if you want to believe that something is different this time, you have to have an explanation for that. And my explanation would be the enormous fiscal spending and deficits that we're running at the current rate. I think that is ultimately what people missed and didn't understand quite well enough going into 2023. And my my next prediction for you was going to be that government handouts are gonna accelerate. It's actually, uh, there was the Gavin Newsom thing in in California, which was giving people money to, to buy gas. I mean, these are, these are the sorts of things that have been tried years over year, you know, oh, centuries. I'm telling you, it's coming. And you know, that's another thing to your point. What, what did everybody miss last year? That's probably one of the biggest things people missed was the third year of the presidential cycle. So there's lots of four-year cycles. There's crypto four-year cycle. There's this presidential four-year cycle. The third year, so the year before the election, is always the best year of the stock market. It averages 16%. Okay? So on average, it's 16%. And that clearly is what people missed. And that, that fiscal spend, people had no idea we were going to give hundreds of billions of dollars to a bunch of money launderers in Ukraine. We had no idea that we were going to be back in another war that Ms. Yellen said we can we can clearly afford two wars. Like, what? You're financing wars? Oh, that that's what 
big money does. It finances wars. Um, central banks, that's what they were created for. Um, you know, back in the 1600s, they've been financing wars ever since. That, and that changes. The fourth year, you know, the election year, is on average a muted year for markets. It's, you know, on average about 6%, which is, you know, not not high, not low. Um, but the, the swing factor is what you're talking about, which is we are definitely leaning socialist, communist, like handout, totalitarian. I mean, I hear some of the stuff that's pretty, I'm like, are we in Venezuela? Are we in Argentina? Are, are we in the Weimar Republic? I mean, that's actually a scary, scary thing. I, I read this, a guy did a long series of posts. I wish I could give him credit, but I can't remember his name. On Twitter, going through the history of Weimar, oh my gosh, I had no idea. And, and you look at the things that they did and you look at what's happening in America, it's like, oh my gosh. I mean, it's it's like the same playbook, like down to a whole bunch of stuff. It, it, my eyes were just like, why? I mean, because yeah, my eyes were wide open. Hyperinflation, it was, that could never happen because we have the world reserve currency. Well, guess what's happening right now? There is a chipping away. There's an assault on petrodollar status. And Saudi's now talking to Russia and China, and they're kind of giving us the hand to the face. But I, I think we're closer to a loss of control event than people think. In 1913, it's an important year in a lot of ways, 1913, <laughs> UK was the global superpower. Yeah. Europe, you know, with the UK is kind of the, the, the point of the spear, Europe was still strong. But the UK was the superpower. The sun never set on the British Empire. They were colonial all over the world. They they owned everything, everywhere. And people forget that it took 31 years from 1913 to 1944 for the dollar to replace the pound sterling as the world reserve currency. 31 years, which again, isn't thousands of years, but it's still a long time. And... And then it's only since 1944, really, that we've been the global superpower in America. And on average, right, that that if you go back, we've talked about this many times, it's about a 70 to 80 year run these days. It's not a thousand years like the, the you know, good old days of empires lasting. But every empire in the history of empires has fallen. It's because humans are going to human. Humans are going to go toward greed and cronyism. I mean, cronyism, once the corruption starts, you can't stop it. And it eventually eats itself. I mean, it literally feeds on its own momentum and corruptness. And, and it becomes so corrupt that finally it's so weak because they've They've, they've taken all the assets for themselves and they've left everything else, like their defenses and their and their long-term strategy and philosophy, and then they just get whacked. When Ms. Pelosi, like, while she's in session, on a bill that has to do with semiconductors, her husband is trading NVIDIA options, like, in real time, it, that corruption will lead to what? It will lead to a need for the your, your other prediction, which is you got to give people money to afford stuff. And so what happens is as you devalue the currency, prices start to rise. Well, the problem is they don't rise linearly. They rise parabolically. And again, I, I don't want to predict a Weimar-like, but, but that's where you get. You, you will eventually get to that point where the only way for the average person to survive is through a government handout. And and then it's not even about survival as much as it is, just vote for me, just keep me in power. And so I got to give you enough free electricity, free gasoline, spending money about the devaluation. Now, what that does for one of my other predictions, what that does for Bitcoin prices, 
good stuff. Give us uh, uh, your Bitcoin prediction. I'd love to love to get. I have some some of my own as well. In 2024 is the beginning, and this first year, this this first year, 2024, we've got the having, which takes the fair value from 51, 52. Let's just round it to 50 to 100. Okay, so 100. Then we get the beginning in June of the parabolic move of crypto fall. So we, we transition from crypto summer, which is that migration toward fair value, to the parabolic, oh my God, FOMO, everybody in, in the pool. And I've said this time, I think there's less leverage in the system. So maybe we only get one and a half fair value in this cycle instead of the 2.3. You know, that's that's max and those guys are at 250, whatever. I'm probably in the 150 range. That's just on supply and demand of of the having and and the change in the, the available supply. Well, then in addition to the normal supply shock, we get this demand shock and it's happening. January 8th, they will crown the king. Now I'm 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 weakening it a little bit on bit on BlackRock only. People have convinced me that there's enough going on that a few others are going to get approved. Couple day head start maybe, but maybe they do them all. I don't know. But but on January eighth, that's that is the day. You know, the king's birthday. They're going to approve the ETF, and and tens of billions of dollars are going to flow into it in that first week or so. These are the things that are always the toppest of price prediction. For I know. Bitcoin 2024, where do you think we end up? I, I look, I, I think 150 is in the bag and I'm just going to stick with that. 